Yes, hello there. I'm Anne Murray and I've been invited along by Scotland's Urban Past to present here today. I am a, a volunteer that uh, just had a, an idea in the community and have been sort of working away at it for quite a number of years. But I'll tell you a little bit about Huntley, first of all. There we go. Huntley is a community about 40 miles northwest of Aberdeen um, on the Inverness to Aberdeen Railway uh, line. We have about 4,500 people, so we're classed as a town, although we're very much a rural town. This is the village here, sorry, the town here, uh, but within a, a lovely community uh, which is very agricultural and a lot of forestry commission area as well. Um, it's not always been known as Huntley. Huntley uh, was previously called Strathbogie, and then it was to do with the Duke of Richmond and the Gordons that it uh, evolved into becoming Huntley itself. We, the town has a great deal of history, and uh, it has a, a textile industry in the 1700s that apparently uh, was almost as big as Paisley, which just seems completely unimaginable to us now, because there's not really any evidence of textiles within the town. When I moved to Huntley in 2012, I was aware that there was an awful lot of history, there was loads of buildings, uh, there was obviously been a, an estate at some point, and some really grand sort of Victorian buildings, and I was really surprised to see that there wasn't actually a historical society. Um, in the absence of that, I, I was aware that there was an awful lot of history of people leaving Huntley and the industries that were there, um, but there doesn't seem to be a, a depository or somewhere that people could tell their own story, so, and that's what I was really interested in. So in the absence of a heritage society and just really being me and not having anybody else to, to sort of get together a huge group or have the funds to rent a room and, and all that kind of thing, I thought, well, I can do something. And even if it doesn't start straight away, it, it will grow, I would imagine, because that's the way that Facebook groups grow. <laughs> they seem to do that. Um, I'd been artists in residence at Port Soy and they had been doing uh, some amazing things with Port Soy Past and Present, which is a, a community-run Facebook group. And, and I thought, well, I'm sure Huntley has equally as many interesting stories and people. Um, so I set up Huntley Histories, which is a Facebook group that anyone can join. Um, and it gets populated with information about the people. Uh, this is a Primary 7 trip here. Um, I think it was 1961, I think we identified yesterday. And uh, this is uh, Queen Street, which at one time was one of the most expensive streets to buy in, um, with a huge big gas works beside it, which is no longer there. But it, it seemed to be part of the development of the town that the gas works was a really prestigious thing to have because you could have electricity and heating within your house, your, your nice Victorian house. And then, so there's also, there's people, um, you know, putting information up on Facebook. There's uh, information about the houses and who stayed in it, and also the, the businesses that were there and the objects that were associated with these businesses. So that was at the end of 2013. Um, and we went within the first month to about 1,500 um, people commenting and participating in, in Huntley Histories online. And I thought, this is, this is really good. There's loads of stories. I knew that there would be out there, and uh, it really developed into quite uh, an interesting document of the history of the town itself. There's been a lot of serendipity in this project uh, so far, and one of them was I was volunteering in Aberdeen at the Aberdeen City um, Creative Learning Team, 
and I came across this cartoon, this huge drawing of uh, this, whoop, sorry, this item here, which is the Gordon Highlanders emblem. And I, having lived in Huntley for a year or so then, I thought, gosh, that's Gordon Highlanders. I recognize that. You know, everyone in Huntley knows the Gordon Highlanders. Um, and they, they said, oh, we're starting a project with the Gordon Highlander Museum in Aberdeen and community groups within Aberdeen City. Um, and I was getting really, really excited and said, oh, you come to Huntley, you know, because, you know, that's where the Gordon Highlanders came from. And they went, no. I was like, oh, my goodness, who can I tell? Who, you know, and there wasn't anyone that I could actually have a conversation with to say, Huntley needs to be involved in this, because I would have been really upset if we got to the end of the project, they had produced the... Yeah, so there's been a lot of serendipity in this project. Um, I pestered and uh, sort of said, I'll do it for free. I don't, you know, I'll do what I can to make something happen in Huntley. Um, and they finally agreed that they would come out to Huntley. Um, and the hand, I organised a tea party, which invite, I invited everybody that was on Facebook group to come along and come and see some handling objects from the Gordon Highlanders and also to find out about this tapestry. Um, and the, uh, the artist who actually draw, drew these uh, is Andrew Crummy, who did the Great Tapestry of Scotland. Um, so it was a really prestigious project and it was something that I really didn't want Huntley to not be involved in. Um, so we managed to get a group of about six of us uh, who were going to do, we didn't know what we were going to do, but we, we worked on the tapestry. It took us a whole year to be involved and we mainly worked on one panel and then swapped it with Aberdeen. Um, there were a number of groups in Aberdeen working on the project and uh, prior to starting uh, the sewing we had quite a lot of discussion with Andrew Crummy and I was able to put him in touch with local historians and people in the area that contributed stories that quite significantly changed the look of the the tapestry on either side, um, including things like incorporating the hills that represented the area that the, a lot of the people came from, uh, like the Cabra, where it was decimated by the First World War and is, is basically a heritage, um, a monument to the, first, the people lost in the First World War because there weren't that many people that came back and they weren't able to continue with their farms at that point. Um, also, there was a lady in Huntley that went out to work on the front line as a nurse um, who someone was writing a book about. And so these kind of things were included. So the female's role and the animal's role in the, in the First World War was also incorporated there. So that, that was my first sort of live project. Um, I then went off for a year to uh, work on a project with Rhiney, reuniting Rhiney with Rhiney Mann. Um, but in the meantime, I was really thinking about Huntley and how could I bring a project back into the town of Huntley. So I applied for some funding. Um, because of the, the sort of audience I'd started to build and the project that we had done, and we held uh, an exhibition in the museum, in, sorry, in the library, um, where we exhibited the, the tapestries. There was quite a lot of interest in Huntley and history and so I applied to the community council and, and got a really small fund, which is a project that I've just started. And it's called Huntley and 100 Objects. Um, I want to build a network of people who have contributed into a, a project. Um, so I'm looking for everyday objects that will fit into a RZA's ice cream tub. I should have brought one with me. But they're about this size, the ones that you get in a theatre or a cinema, that, that sort of size ice cream tub. Um, because I was a bit concerned that if I asked people to bring objects along that I would end up with tractors and combines and things like that and I just thought I can't cope with that. So <laughs> um, I kept it really really manageable so things have to be sort of hand sized um, and I'm gathering the objects um, in the absence of having a museum in our town which we, we no longer have. Um, I wanted a portable museum that we could hand out something to people um, that had objects in it that might trigger memories and stories and people sharing about their experience of Huntley. 
So, so far, I think I'm up to close to 30 items. So it's going to take me a little bit longer than I imagined. But um, it's been really great meeting people on the way and building up networks of interested people in the history of Huntley. Uh, so we've got objects from the, um, like, things from the businesses. Um, this is a, a, a cycle um, speedometer. And uh, there's an awful lot of cycling history in Huntley, including a velodrome uh, that we had at, from the 1900s. Well, there was a cycle track from 1900s, um, but a velodrome uh, after the war. Um, so there's a lot of fascinating history. We used to have three cycling shops. You know, so there's all these, this sort of hidden history that people don't remember so much. Um, Riz's ice cream, uh, that was my first item, donated by the family, and that was their first um, portable ice cream that they sold in the 1960s. Um, so I've been cataloguing all these items, taking photographs, and in the process talking to people and, and getting them interested in the history of Huntley. That has led on to having conversations with Scotland's urban past, and that was another sort of serendipitous kind of uh, conversation where I hadn't managed to come into Aberdeen to go on one of the courses, but I got in touch afterwards saying, you know, I'd like to find out more about it. And we just started talking, and it sort of evolved into, oh, we've got quite an interesting project. So, so we, we've built up a good relationship with uh, Scotland's urban past over the past few months. And um, I decided that I needed an organisation to work with. Um, and so I offered my sort of volunteering services to Networks of Wellbeing, which is uh, an organisation that promotes positive mental health and wellbeing in the community. Uh, because I had been a, uh, someone using their, not services, but using their groups to go in and do craft and things like that. And that's where I'd found a place to host the, the tapestry sewing. So I thought they might be interested in sort of hosting the Huntley histories. And I would bring in some expertise and, and run some things sort of with their help and support. And, and it's worked really well. And subsequently, I've now got a part-time job with them. So it's, it's actually worked amazingly well. <laughs> but we've only just started. We have run a shop walk. An awful lot of people talk in Huntley Histories about the history of the shops. Sadly, Huntley has got two huge um, supermarkets. And a lot of the central shops in the square have closed down. But... There, there are plans to sort of regenerate and look at the, the square and look at the shops. And, and there's an awful lot of history in businesses like Dean's Shortbread, Rayburn's Butchers, uh, Rizza's Ice Cream. They, they've moved around and I just thought if we did some walks, maybe we could talk and walk at the same time and then have a coffee and share some stories. Um, so we started the, the Walk This Way uh, sort of project. So it's uh, low-level walks sort of on the principles of Paths for All. And uh, we've had, we had on our first event, we had 25 people turned up, turn up, because you organize these things and you think, is anyone going to turn up? But they did, I was really, really delighted. Um, and we had Patrick Scott, who's a local historian, talking us uh, through some of the history of the shops. But we had a lot of local people come along to the walk, which was fantastic. And they added to the richness of the stories that were we're told on that day. Um, that has continued, and we now have... Yesterday, um, we're really brand new. Yesterday, we had our first sort of training session with Carol and Peggy, and uh, we had... I could have filled the course probably twice over. We only had... We've had got a really tiny space to work in, um, and we had 15 participants in the 14 or 15 participants yesterday. Uh, we did a little bit about mapping and just to sort of set the scene and show the context of Huntley and how it's evolved over the years. So we went through all the mapping. And um, I had uh, run a small workshop one afternoon after a walk, um, just sort of building a community map, just to see what things, stories, um, places, uh, happenings that people could record on a map and this is the result of that that workshop but yesterday we used it within the workshop uh, to get people to put their favorite place down on the map 
um, and that got people talking and uh, sharing a lot of information about hunting. Um, that's really the, you know, most of the things that I have to talk about. Um, Hunt is a really special place. Uh, one of the, the poems that, that has emerged out of the research that I've done is, uh, and you may have heard it, it's the bat, the bat Hill, Battle Hill, the Clashmark and the Bin, the Bogey and the Devron and Huntley lays within. And that really sums up Huntley. Um, if we go back to this, um, it's, it's sort of cosseted within... Uh, four hills um, and a little accumulation of houses that have devel developed um, over probably more formally in the, in the past 300, 300 years. We're just starting to do some archaeological digging. Um, is it here? No. Where is it? Uh, it's off here the side of Huntley, uh, still within the, the village area, um, and we've got initial signs of Neolithic uh, flint shards that have been produced out of the sort of making of flint tools, so that's really exciting. So we, there's a project that's going to be running for the next five years, I believe, um, and so I'm hoping that I can introduce more sort of community-based things. Um, and with the training course we did yesterday, I, I invited a lot of the other community groups around the town to it. Uh, so we had, um, we've got contacts with the Masonic Hall, the churches, the writers group, um, the school, lots and lots of different groups that all have their own archives and their own um, pieces of information that could be incorporated into the Scotland's urban past. So I'm looking forward to working with them and seeing what happens over the next few years. But thank you very much for inviting me along today.